Hello everyone, welcome back to this uh, fourth week of this uh, lecture series. In this week, we will continue our discussion on Hassofer Lean Reliability Index. So, last week we developed model for Rackwitz algorithm uh, and uh, we developed uh, Hassofer Lean Reliability Index following Rackwitz Wiesler algorithm. So, let us continue our discussion on that topic. Now, let us quickly go through all the steps. So, we started with the limit state gx equal to 0 and then we first convert that to gz equal to 0 where z represents the standard normal space. The reason is the definition of reliability index is actually defined in the standard normal space where it represents the shortest distance to the point of first failure and that point we call it most probable point of failure. Now, from the linear limit state, the moment we move over to a nonlinear limit state, which is represented by a pink line on your screen, then we discussed how we need to solve an optimization problem to find out the minimum distance beta, which we call Hassofer Lind Reliability Index. Now, for that optimization, our objective function is dn which is equal to norm of z where z represents any point on this limit state. Obviously, for that the moment we try to optimize this function, we need to satisfy a constraint condition which is an equality constraint that is gz equal to 0. Now, we also discuss how to solve this optimization problem and we adopted Lagrange multiplier technique for the solution and then we first defined Lagrangian function and then we introduced a scalar parameter lambda which we call Lagrange multiplier and because we have only one constraint condition to satisfy we have only one Lagrange multiplier and then we differentiate L with respect to unknowns in this case our unknowns are z and obviously the scalar multiplier lambda. So, we differentiate L with respect to zi where i ranges from 1 to n and then an additional equation where we differentiate L with respect to lambda and the moment we do that we end up with the equality constraint condition and then we use matrix notation to solve this problem. What we ultimately get this Lagrange multiplier depends on the gradient vector and that gradient vector we can easily estimate by differentiating this function gz with respect to z and then evaluate the gradient at the point where we need this. Then the optimal solution z star we also estimated which comes out to be minus lambda d of n multiplied by capital G star. Then we also did some matrix operation to finally get the optimal solution that is the optimal distance of the MPP which we call Hassofer Lean Reliability Index beta and then we get the expression of beta. However, we also discuss the solution strategy because we do not know on the right hand side of this equation beta we have z star which we do not know as of now and that is the reason uh, we introduced an iterative solution to find out optimal distance and then uh, our optimal solution for z uh, comes out to be alpha i star where alpha i is the direction cosine times beta and the expression for direction cosine you can also see on your screen. So, this algorithm was developed by Rackwitz and hence we call it Rackwitz algorithm. And we also identified that there could be different possibilities depending upon the nature of the random variable that we deal with. In this formulation, for the first problem, we considered uncorrelated normal. So, from that description if we move over we can have different other possibilities 
our random variables can be non-normal, it can be uncorrelated, then there may be a possibility that all the random variables are correlated but normal and finally the most general case is where the variables are correlated and also non-normal. So as we decided to solve all these problems one by one, we will take it up. But before we discuss how to solve all these cases, let us first revisit the drawbacks for MVFOSM that we wanted to solve in first order reliability method. If you recall, our major drawback in the mean value first order second moment method was the lack of invariance. So let us first consider a problem which we have already solved in the last class and let us see whether the problem of lack of invariance is actually addressed or not. So we reconsider the same problem we have a cantilever beam and then it is experiencing a point load at the free end. The length of the cantilever beam is 2 meter and then we design the beam against plastic capacity at the support. So we have three random variables x1, x2, x3 and all of them are uncorrelated normal and their properties are also given. So we solved this problem. Our design point was what you can see on your screen, this we concluded after three iterations and then based on that we also identified what is the reliability index in this case and it is 2.2577 based on the limit state you can see on your screen gx equal to x1 x2 minus x3 times l equal to 0. And after third iteration when our beta estimate converged to the point 2.2577. We also estimated PF which is probability of failure. It is phi of minus beta and we estimated the value of probability of failure. Now, how we solve this problem? Let us quickly review the steps. So we started with an initial guess of alpha i where we applied equal weightage to all directions. Then we cast a algebraic equation in terms of beta in the standard normal space and then we solve that problem to find out the lowest value of beta and we use that value to update the solution and every time we check convergence so that we can conclude the iteration and find out the final beta. Now in this process we only considered algebraic limit state. This we will further discuss how we can relax this. And then all the random variables may be correlated, non-normal that we will consider one by one. But for the time being let us see if we change the format of the limit state. So earlier it was x1 x2 minus x3 times l equal to 0. But right now let us change the format. So we have gx equal to 1 minus x3 times l divided by x1 x2 which is equal to 0 and all other descriptions for this problem that remain same. So the length remains 2 meter and the uncertainties that we considered also remains same. So let us solve this problem and see whether we get the same answer and that will conclude whether the problem of lack of invariance is addressed in this uh, mathematical model for reliability index. So we start with gx equal to 0 and that we convert to gz equal to 0 using a transformation that we have already discussed. What we do is subtract mean and divide it by the standard deviation to get a new random variable. Here number of random variables are 3. So we have in the original space x1, x2, x3 that we convert into standard normal space and we get 3 new variables z1, z2, z3. And because we subtract mean and divide it by the standard deviation, the new random variables z1, z2 and z3 
they have zero mean and unit standard deviation. So, if we cast the problem in the standard normal space, we get GZ which is having a new expression in terms of mean and standard deviation of the random variables that formulates this problem. So, we have changed the format and that you can see on your screen and then recall that Z star is equal to alpha I star times B. So, we substitute this in the above equation and also put the values of mean and standard deviation which are known to us and then we solve the problem in the same fashion that we discussed in the last class. So, we start with an initial guess of beta equal to 3 and then we put equal weightage to alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. This we have already discussed. So, you all know how to select this. A better guess at this level will give us less number of iterations. We can start from any other point and obviously that may demand a higher computational cost iteration number of iterations may increase but if we know for a problem where the range of beta is then we can select a favorable point. Now with that initial guess if we continue our iteration then after third iteration on the fourth iteration our value converges to 2.2577 and for the situation we use a stopping criteria where reliability index in two successive iterations are considered and their absolute difference between these two values if it is less than 0 0.001 then we stop the iteration otherwise we continue. And at the end of this iteration we get the solution in the z space that you can see on your screen. So, you have z1, z2 and z3. These are the optimal solution in the z space that represents MPP which is the nearest point to the origin and that is the reason it represents the first point of failure. And based on this if we estimate beta then we get the value is 2.2577 and the respective probability of failure also we can estimate which turns out to be the same value 1.1984 into 10 to the power minus 2. So, in summary our problem statement remains same, level of uncertainty remains same, but we consider the limit state in two different format as you can see on your screen and then we solve the same problem using two different formats of the limit state. We adopt Rackwitz algorithm to solve Hassofer lean reliability index and in both the cases we end up with the same optimal design point which we call MPP and the estimate of beta also remains same and as a consequence our PF estimation also remains same. So, what we can conclude that if we change the format of the limit state this does not affect the value of beta as you can see on your screen whether it is the first format in the pattern C minus D equal to 0 and if we change it in a different way 1 minus D by C equal to 0 the beta estimate remains same it is exactly 2.2577 and of course the beta value remains same that will provide us the same value of PF which is 1.1984 into 10 to the power minus 2. So, what we can conclude that Reliability index does not change if we adopt Hassofer Lin's model and solve it using Rackwitz algorithm. And we have addressed lack, lack of invariance when we solve this first order reliability problem following Rackwitz algorithm. So, our main concern in mean value first order second moment method is now addressed. So, let us move forward. Let us solve a few more problems today and see how this algorithm works. Our next problem is 
a limit state which is an equation of a circle you can see on your screen gx equal to x1 square plus x2 square minus 18 so that is the gx and it is shown by this blue line in x1 x2 plane we have two random variables in this problem x1 and x2 and both of them are normal with the same mean and standard deviation the mean in this case is 10 and the standard deviation is 5 our task is to find out reliability index and probability of failure now before we solve this problem apparently all the points on this blue line they are equidistant from this origin although it is not the standard normal space so every point we can expect to be the design point but let us see what is the design point when we introduce uncertainty so we start our solution from gx we convert that into gz using the same transformation where we subtract mean and divide the variable by its standard deviation to get the new variable in the standard normal space so we have two variables x1 and x2 so we introduce two new variables z1 and z2 and we convert gz and the expression for gz is what you can see on your screen where we get this expression by putting x1 and x2 in the original limit state now in this expression values of mean and standard deviations are known so we can simplify this expression that we'll do in a minute so here you can see so we put the values of mean and standard deviation and get the simplified form of gz and then once we get this expression we differentiate gz with respect to z1 and z2 and in this case because it is a circle the first differential of gz with respect to z1 and z2 both of them are same and then if you recall z star that is the optimal solution in the standard normal space is alpha i star times beta so we modify this expression of gz where we put the expression of z in and express this limit state in terms of alpha and beta now once this is done we can start the iteration and then we solve this problem with uh, initial guess and we start the iteration with alpha initial as in this case we have two random variables so we put equal weightage in alpha 1 and alpha 2 so the value from where we start is 1 by 2 which is 0 0.7071 and then we also consider beta initial to be 3 and then using these two values we find out what is the z initial and because we have equal weightage in alpha i we also get uh, same point same values for z1 and z2 as their initial value and then using these values we then estimate the direction cosines that you can see on your screen on the left hand side so we first find out the gradient and then using this information we find out what are the direction cosines and obviously again in this case if you notice the sign that we use for faster convergence then using this alpha i we modify the equation gz in terms of alpha and beta and then finally we get a quadratic equation of beta which we can solve so if we solve this equation we get the roots of this equation and the roots in this case are 1.9799 and 3.6770 obviously out of these two possibilities we are going to select 1.9799 which is the lowest value and that gives us the point of first failure so we consider beta final to be 1.9799 so then we check for convergence because we have to iteratively solve this 
So we change the initial values of alpha i and beta with these new values and then continue the iterative procedure. Again in this case we have algebraic expression for beta. We will see when we have different options or how we can adapt a computationally efficient methodology to solve this because uh, root finding at some point of time can be numerically challenging. So we will when it will come we will update you. Now If we complete the iteration, after third iteration, we see the convergence is achieved and the value that we get for beta based on the stopping criteria that we have already discussed on beta, where the tolerance is 0 0.001. So the optimal solution for Z1 and Z2 is 1.4, minus 1.4. And then based on these estimates, the reliability index is 1.9799. So we can estimate PF which is 2.385 into 10 to the power minus 2. So you can see how we can use Hassoffer lean reliability index to solve different problems. So let us consider a different problem in this case. Again we have a GX where we have four random variables x1, x2, x3, x4 you can see on your screen and all of them are normal with their means and standard deviations given. So what we do again we transform the limit state into gz following the same procedure and we use transformations for that. In this case we have four random variables in the original space x1, x2, x3, x4. So you introduce four random variables in the standard normal space z1, z2, z3, z4. Then we modify this expression using the transformation and convert gx into gz. Once we get gz then we differentiate that expression and find out the gradient vector so in this case we have four random variables so we need to differentiate four times and then ultimately we reconstruct the expression for gz because we can represent this z in terms of alpha and beta alpha is the direction cosine so finally we get the last expression you can see on your screen now this can be further modified because we know the mean values and standard deviation of each and every random variable. So we apply Rackwitz algorithm to solve this problem and then again we continue the iteration. Because we have four random variables in this case we apply again equal weightage along four direction cosines. So we have the initial values are 0.5 for all of them and then the initial guess for beta is 3. So with that we start our iteration and you can see it continues for fifth iteration and at the fifth iteration we can see the value of beta has converged. And the final value of beta is 3.2526. Corresponding solution in the Z space also we can identify. So we have values of Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4 which is the nearest point to the origin that represents the point of first failure or MPP. We use the same stopping criteria and then the beta in this case is 3.2526 so we can solve again PF which in this case turns out to be 5.7184 into 10 to the power minus 4. So with these problems we have seen how we can adapt Hassoffer leaned reliability index and Rackwitz algorithm to solve for beta. Now, let us consider a design problem that we very often encounter in structural engineering. So, we have a doubly reinforced beam that you can see on your screen. Now, in this case, because it is doubly reinforced, it has 
rebars in the tension zone as well as in the compression zone. Now, the problem statement says the beam has a width of 300 millimeter. Small d, the depth of the beam is 450 millimeter. And then it is subjected to a moment when the effective cover D prime is 50 millimeter. The beam is made of M20 concrete and Fe 415 steel. Our task is to design this beam and find out the reliability index against bending. Now for that, because we have a doubly reinforced beam where the amount of steels you can see on your screen. So in the tension side, we have 625 rebars. And in the compression zone, we have 425 rebars. So for this, if we estimate the capacity of this beam that you can see the expression, which is also recommended in the IS456. So we have the sectional capacity coming from the steel in the tension zone and then also in the compression zone. But in this case, we have under reinforced section. So our moment capacity is governed by two factors, one originating from the concrete above neutral axis and the second part which is coming from the steel in the compression zone. Now, this problem has three random variables x1, x2, x3 which are m that is the externally applied moment, then xu that is the depth of the neutral axis and then f of sc. Now, if we solve this problem, again we start with our gx which is given and then we convert that into gz using the transformation because we have three random variables. We have three new random variables in the standard normal space and then if we convert gx First what we do, we put the known values of all the parameters in this equation and then we simplify it first and then we convert gx into gz by using this transformation. And then again our next task is to represent this in terms of z equal to alpha i times beta. So we substitute this expression for z star and then we develop an equation in the standard normal space in terms of alpha i and beta before we start Rackwitz algorithm. So we solve this problem with our initial guess for beta equal to 3 and we put equal weightage along all the direction cosines. And that you can see on your screen again we have three random variables so that's the reason we have alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to alpha 3 which is having a value of 0 0.5774 now with that value if we do the iteration in the next iteration we get a beta of 3.1702 which ultimately converged in the third iteration so we can find out the optimal solution in the z space and then from that we can estimate beta and we can also convert this into x space and you can see the values of x1, x2, x3 after the iteration is converged. These are the values for our design. This is exactly the point where we design the beam to have a failure probability that we are going to estimate in a minute. So we have optimal points in the z space then we from that we can estimate beta and then we can also estimate probability of failure and in this case it is 7.62 into 10 to the power minus 4. So for this design problem we have solved the 
reliability index and subsequently the probability of failure. So, if we summarize the entire mathematical operations that we carry out to solve this Hasselhoff-Lind reliability index is on your screen which we have already discussed. So, it starts with gx then uh, we convert that to gz and then uh, using Lagrange multiplier we solve this Rackwitz algorithm. Now, uh, if we just quickly identify what are the steps. So, we first convert x to z using this relation. Then we convert gx to gz. Then once we have gz equal to 0, we assume initial values of alpha i and beta i n. And in this process, we try to apply equal weightage along all the direction cosines because summation of the square of this direction cosines must be equal to 1. That is the property of direction cosine. And then we convert this gz into an algebraic expression where in place of z we apply alpha i and beta and that is how we cast a uh, equation for beta that we solve. And in this solution procedure we find out the roots of beta and based on that roots we actually find out which should be the value of the optimal beta. Then once we do that we evaluate the new design point and we check for tolerance if the level of tolerance is achieved then we stop the iteration otherwise we redo this iteration. Now in this process our main uh, step to solve for the new beta is where we solve the algebraic expression for beta. Now, as I said earlier that there may be two things, not always you will get an algebraic expression so that you can uh, find out roots easily and also even if you have algebraic expressions, of course, I mean we can adopt a computationally efficient solution because in some problems we need to iterate this for longer times. So, if at this step if we can make the numerical procedure more efficient that ultimately helps the iterative solution. So, let us revisit how we can solve this expression for finding the root. Now, if you recall numerically we can solve this using Newton Raphson's technique. So, let us quickly review what is this technique and how we can use this in our estimation of reliability index. So, if we have a function f x equal to 0 then using this technique we can find out the root. So, we start from a point x naught and then we first consider this to be the root, but let us assume that x1 which is in the vicinity of x0 is the actual value of the root and that x1 is equal to x0 plus h and because the actual root is there at x1 obviously f of x1 will be 0. So, what we can do we can expand this function fx equal to 0 in Taylor series and the graphical representation also you can see on your screen. So, we have along x we have these points x0, x1 and so on and then we plot f of x. So, we have this line which actually is 0 at this point. We are trying to find out this value of x which we call the root of this equation. So, we start from x0 then at this point we draw a tangent and see where that tangent meets this horizontal line that is my x1 and the difference between these two is basically h and then we estimate the ordinate here if this value is small or less than tolerance or close to 0 then we stop the iteration otherwise repeat the same procedure to find out where f x equal to 0. So, that we do 
using Taylor series expansion. So what we do, f of x1, we expand using Taylor series and that you can see on your screen. x1 is nothing but x0 plus h and therefore we can use x0 as the reference point and then expand this into Taylor series. And obviously this is an infinite series, we need to truncate that which we do after first two terms. So we consider up to first derivative of f and then we stop there. So our expression after we expand it in Taylor series is f of x1 equal to f of x0 plus h into f prime of x0 which is equal to 0. Now because we have actual root at x1 obviously f of x1 equal to 0. So then if we simplify, we get this expression for x1 which is nothing but x0 minus f of x0 divided by f prime of x0. And the difference between x1 and x2 is nothing but h which is this horizontal distance. Now as I said, at the new point, obviously in a first iteration, it may not converge to the root. So what we do, we find out this ordinate at x1 and then if it is not sufficiently small then we again repeat the same procedure to find out the next point in the vicinity. So if we write down this expression for the root in generic form you get this final expression where xn plus 1 equal to xn minus f of xn divided by f prime of xn. So if we just quickly solve one problem, so fx in these cases x cube minus 2x minus 5. So we solve this problem using newton raphson technique. So first find out the gradient. So we differentiate this f with respect to x. So in this case we can easily find out the first derivative. And then we cast this expression for root in terms of f of xn and f prime of xn which are known to us now and then we iteratively solve. So we start with an initial guess, initial point is 2 and then at this point uh, we start our solution then after third iteration you can see it converges to a value and then that represents the root of this equation. So of course in this process we need to go for multiple solutions of this function. So every time we need to call this function and its derivative and then of course that is uh, uh, computationally challenging for actual reliability problems where the functional form is not in this simple expression and then there may be uh, an issue but at least if we can adapt this Newton Raphson technique it is very handy to numerically implement and then every time we find out a root for uh, the new value of beta we can easily uh, do this and solve for a new estimate of beta. So with this uh, brief discussion on Newton Raphson technique let us see how we can adapt this to solve our problem where we can have any generic expression of gx. So what we do in the standard normal space let us assume that z of k plus 1 be the solution at the k plus 1th step. So this is this represents the root where root means in this case if we put this value in the gz we will get gz equal to 0. So now if we use Taylor series again and expand g of z k plus 1. So we have g of z k that is the last point in the previous iteration plus we have the gradient vector evaluated at z k and then the difference between this point which was earlier small h and then because this is Taylor series it has infinite number of terms so we trunk it after first two terms. Now as this zk plus 1 is a possible solution obviously 
the value of g of z k plus 1 star will be equal to 0 and if we do that we can get the expression and by solving that we can find out z k plus 1 star which is the solution and then the expression goes like this you can see it comes after matrix manipulation so that you can easily uh, do it at your end take it as a home task and just find it out it's very simple so what we can conclude from this if we start with initial value of zk then using that information we can find out zk star zk plus one star that is the new point and of course in this we use again uh, stopping criteria based on the difference between the design points or the functional values of the limit state. Now this uh, solution strategy it is computationally efficient. Why? The reason is in this case we don't need to solve for beta and then reevaluate alpha and then again find out z k plus 1 but we directly get z k plus 1 from the estimate of z k. That's the reason it is computationally more efficient and the experience shows that it also converges at a faster rate because we don't need to solve for all the roots. Uh, we are only interested about a root which is in the vicinity of Zk. That's the reason it is computationally more efficient. And this was first uh, proposed by these three authors in a paper published in the year 1978. And... Uh, it was published in Computers and Structures. The method is called raquids fisler algorithm where we use iterative solution in the Z space without solving directly for beta. We can get the next design point and once we find out next design point, if that is the optimal point, just taking the norm of this, we can find out the reliability index. So, this algorithm where we do not solve directly beta in every iteration but get the solution in the Z space, this algorithm called raquids fisler algorithm. Now, the algorithm goes like this. Again, we start from the same limit state function gx equal to 0 and we convert that expression into gz using the transformations that we have already discussed. And then once we know gz, we differentiate this expression with respect to z, that is the random variables in the standard normal space, and that gradient vector gives us capital G. Then we start the iteration where earlier we used to find out beta based on the initial guess of beta and alpha i. In this case, we start with the initial guess on z and then we evaluate capital G based on this information and then once we find out this capital G, we get the design point in the z space and then compute the design point in the x space and then finally check the convergence where we consider two successive iterations and if it satisfies the stopping criteria then we stop the solution otherwise we go to step 3 and repeat the procedure. And in this case what is the modification? Modification is there at the step 5 where we directly compute the new value of the z in the standard normal space without solving for beta. And that's the step where we use Newton Raphson technique to solve for the new design point. And that's the reason it is called Rackwitz Fisler algorithm as it was first proposed by them in their paper. So we get the design point or MPP in the standard normal space that we can again convert to the original space X. And that's how uh, the Rackwitz Fisler algorithm for Hasselhoff-Lind reliability index works. So, 
in our next class we will solve some problem using this algorithm and we'll see two things first how we can bypass the step where we solve for beta and every iteration and then we will also compare the results whether we get the same solution or not and how it is computationally more efficient so in the next class we'll again take up some hypothetical limit state and also we'll consider some design limit state where we'll consider some structural design problems and see how this rackwitz fisler algorithm helps to estimate reliability index and subsequently probability of failure so with that we come to the closure of our discussion on rackwitz fisler algorithm so uh, we will continue our discussion we will solve some problems and we will see how we can apply this model for uh, design of structures where we have uncertainty thank you very much mm -hmm.